This is the 2025 Framework Laptop 13 Do-It-Yourself Edition. You can spec it all the way up to a Ryzen 9 HX370 CPU. My unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and a 2.8K IPS display, all for just over $2,000. Now, I love the idea of a laptop I can upgrade or repair over time, but let's be real. Compared to other similarly spec laptops, you're definitely paying a premium for that privilege. For example, you can get a MacBook Pro 14 with 24 gigabytes of RAM for the same price, or even a MacBook Air 13 with 32 gigabytes of RAM for less. And if you wanna to stick to Windows, something like the ZenBook S14 gives you an OLED display for even cheaper. Now, I'm not knocking what Framework is doing. I want them to succeed. I love the idea of repairing and upgrading my own device, but the price, it's a tough pill to swallow. Sure, part of that premium is because Framework is a smaller company without Lenovo or HP level buying power. But if they can't compete on price, they should be flexing hard on design. Now, to be fair, they've done some of that. I love the translucent bezel. It's giving Game Boy color nostalgia in the best way. Swapping out port colors and mixing and matching modules. It's genuinely cool. It's the kind of modularity you just don't see anywhere else on the market. Building it is actually fun. I felt more connected to the machine putting it together than just unboxing a pre-built laptop. The instructions are solid too, even for first timers. Of course, I didn't read them. I'm a certified maniac, but I jammed in a one terabyte WD black SSD, which got good read and write speeds, slapped in both 16 gigabyte RAM sticks, upgradable to 96 by the way, clicked in the bezel, snapped the keyboard in place, picked my ports, two USB-C, which run at USB 4.0 speeds, one USB-A, one HDMI, and boom, I was done. According to Framework, that's the most popular port combo, but the flexibility is the fun part. Want to swap in an RJ45 port or extra storage later? You can absolutely do that. Now the build quality is solid, but not MacBook tier, but definitely not cheap. Think Acer from a few years ago. Clean aluminum chassis, no frills, but sturdy. It's 1.3 kilograms, 2.87 pounds, opens with one hand. I absolutely love that. And while the screen does have some wobble, the hinge is super tight. The display is a 2.8K QHD plus IPS panel with a three by two aspect ratio. Now it's not OLED, but it's still sharp. Color accuracy is good, but color gamut is kind of meh. It's fine for daily use, but don't expect MacBook level or MacBook Pro level depth. Brightness is decent. Refresh rate is 120 hertz and the webcam is okay, but no Windows Hello facial recognition to log you in. But at least there's a fingerprint scanner that works well. Okay, so this is what the Framework Laptop 13 webcam looks like. It is a 1080p webcam and uh, day is a little dark, so not the best lighting right now. So it's probably going to be struggling a bit more than other laptops I've tested. But yeah, you guys let me know how it looks and how does the microphone sound. Now typing on this thing is genuinely enjoyable. The keyboard's basic looking, but super clicky with about 1.5 millimeters of travel distance. Backlight levels are kind of meh, only really visible in full darkness, but it types like a dream. The glass touchpad also feels great and uses Windows precision drivers, so no complaints there. Now here's my favorite part. Absolutely no stickers, none. No Intel, no AMD, no I paid too much branding. Just a clean, minimalistic deck. I don't know how Framework pulled this off, but I imagine they paid the sticker guy to stay home. Speakers are bottom firing. Two two watt speakers on the bottom. They're okay, don't expect cinematic audio, but it's passable. Battery life is around nine hours, at least with my PC Mark Modern Office test. Now this is not class leading, but it's not bad. You do have to pay extra for a charger, but at least it charges via USB type C. Now one small design quirk is the display alignment. The bottom corners line up perfectly, but the top corners have these weird little gaps. Now this is not a deal breaker unless you've got display OCD. Now we gotta talk about performance. The HX370 CPU is still a beast. Yes, it loses to the M4 MacBook Air in single core tasks, about 37% slower in fact, but it's neck and neck with the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. Single core speeds matter for things like web browsing or app launches, and the Mac still rules that space. But multi-core? That's where this chip flexes. It beats the MacBook Air by 52%, and Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite by nearly 5%. In real world use, like my Premiere Pro test, it outpaced other Windows laptops by 11%. The Mac still wins due to better media encoders and unified memory, but AMD holds its own. 
In Photoshop, the Framework laptop beat all the other Windows laptops by 25%. But again, the MacBook Air still edged it out by 12%. Now this is not a big deal. All of these machines handle Photoshop absolutely fine. My Mozilla Firefox compile test also showed strong performance. The framework came second only to the MacBook, mostly because Unix-based systems like macOS are better optimized for that task. Web browsing responsiveness was 41% faster on the MacBook Air, but the framework still beat out Intel's Lunar Lake and Snapdragon X Elite chips by 27%. The integrated RX 890M GPU is surprisingly solid. It won't out benchmark Intel's Arc, but it runs older titles like Overwatch on medium at full HD plus without breaking a sweat. No drop frames, no lag, just smooth gaming. Core clock speeds were where they should be. And the CPU maintained its rated 30 watts under load without getting too hot. Temps hovered in the 80s, which is typical for laptops this size. The downside, fan noise. It ramps up fast and it hits about 52 decibels at full tilt. And there's no real fan control in the BIOS. Definitely room for improvement there. So here's my final thoughts. I really like the Framework Laptop 13. But yes, you're paying a premium for repairability and modularity. Could you get better specs? A prettier chassis and a nicer OLED display elsewhere for the same price? Absolutely. But if you're the kind of person who wants to keep your laptop for five to 10 years and loves the idea of swapping parts down the road, this thing makes sense. You can literally order a new motherboard, screen, or hopefully one day upgrade to an OLED panel in the future. So yes, it costs more, but that's the price of freedom. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, feel free to hit the like button. If you haven't subbed already, make sure to sub. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.